Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Red X Podcast. My name is Andrew, and I have a very exciting guest with us today. He's been on the uh, been on the show before, once before, and he taught us some amazing stuff. He's got a really interesting background. He is killing it in real estate. Uh, so I'm excited to have him back again today. Alma Merrill. Alma, how you doing today, man? What's up? How you doing? Hey, uh, when you're talking about interesting background, are you talking about this? <laughs> that that and just your background. But yeah, that is interesting. I like your logo there. Part of the closer noticing, cult, right? Closer cult. Yeah. I was noticing yeah. uh, we have a similar background today on our uh, on our podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Well, we're excited to have you on today, Alma. We're going to get into some really good stuff. Today we are talking about making Fizbos and expireds love you from the moment they talk to you. So yes. I'm super excited about that because they, I mean, Fizbos and expireds both historically are sometimes combative, sometimes a little bit resistant for right. different reasons, but you know, they, they're, they're low hanging fruit, which is awesome, but they also can be a little bit difficult to work with. A lot of people don't like cold calling them, don't like prospecting them, even though they're very fruitful. Right. So. Yeah. yeah. And usually, you know, most people I find that don't like doing it, it's because they, they themselves have some type of mental block. Right. Um, you mentioned their low hanging fruit. That's actually the point of, of working with them is that right. you're not, you're not trying to convince them to list or sell their home. They're already listing or selling their home. They just aren't using an agent. So all you have to do is convince them to work with you instead of doing it on their own. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, well we're going to, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. And that's it. That's all we got today. We summed it up and no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, I'm excited to get into it. We're going to get into some, maybe some, some strategies, some scripts, some of, um, some of our, our, you know, best talking points and best things you can say on the phone to get into it. Before we do any of that, I just want to do a, an obligatory welcome to everyone. We've got people joining us live. If you're in the chats anywhere, please say hi. Tell us where you're from. Um, give Alma a shout out here. And and uh, if you have any questions, I'm going to put you on the spot here, Alma. Please just put them in the chat and, uh, and we'll get to those um, because... Uh, he's the expert and we're going to put yeah. him on the spot a little bit and, and, and hopefully workshop some great stuff with Fizbos and expireds as always like, and subscribe on YouTube, Facebook. You can watch us, you know, uh, go live every, every Thursday at one thirty mountain time there. So please check those out. So you get those reminders. Um, that's all I've got. Alma, let's get into it. Making Fizbos and expireds love you from the moment they talk to you. What are your secrets? How can agents do that? So I always ask people, the question, what do you think causes a for sale by owner or an expire to not like you? Do you have mm. an answer that based on your experience? What causes them to not like you? I think yeah. for expireds, in my opinion, for expireds, they had a bad experience with their last agent. They've got a okay. bad taste in their mouth about real estate agents. For yes. for sale by owners, I'm going to go ahead and say it's because they think they don't need you. They, they don't need they, you or, or they don't want you. They right? don't want you. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason they don't want you isn't because you're not a good person. <laughs> the reason right. that, they, that they don't want you is because they want to save on the commission. Right. Right. And so that's oftentimes what people are so afraid of when they go into the for sale by owner and expire in, in expired world. Right. And so let me ask you this. When you go on the for sale by owner and expired world or you start making those calls, what's the first thing that you come across? I'm going to say some, I mean, is objections, is that too yeah. broad? Just totally. Objections. Objections. Yeah. And really yeah. objections are nothing more than unanswered questions. Mm. So an objection isn't actually, they're not objecting to you. They're not objecting to the idea of working with you because they don't even know you. And so what it is, is they just have a big question mark over their head when they object to working with you. And so right. they're just unanswered questions. And so what I've done is I've created a script over the last almost 20 years of being in the business. Um, I started years ago with one of your competitors getting leads. And then when you guys came onto the market, I jumped right in. I mean, I've literally been with you guys for over, almost probably a little over 15 years. I've been with awesome. Rednecks and I've had your leads. And now I'm an affiliate, which is awesome. And I love that um, because I'd, I had wanted to do that for years. And so when I was kind of invited to do so, um, it was really exciting. It was really exciting for me. So thank Killer. you for that. Um, yeah. Once you have your Red X leads and you start you start dialing, the one thing I always tell people is the best role play that you can have with anybody is not agent to agent. Mm. It's not working with the guy in your office and practicing. 
So what is it? What is the best role play you can have? The best role play you can have is with a real expired or for sale by owner. Okay. If you fail, you fail. Yeah. And if you win, you make money. Hmm. And so with Red X, you have the ability to have so many leads at your disposal that when you fail, it's okay. You just go on to the next one. And I always have a question for people. When you make a phone call and you're talking to somebody on the phone, because when you're a newbie and you're kind of new into the process, you're, you're always concerned, like, they're going to know who I am. They're going to remember my name if I try to call them again. But in reality, they don't remember your name. They don't know who you are. They don't remember your conversation. So if you had a really bad call with them and you had a really bad conversation, it's okay. You can just try again later. Absolutely. And so I love that mindset. And I think, I think a lot of people... I think this is a, a nice spin on something that some people get a little bit discouraged about, which is the, oh, you're the hundredth agent. To right, call. Yes. I've gotten a dozen calls in the last hour. I'm getting sick of it. But what that tells you is that if you fail, when you fail, because it is inevitable and that's okay. Yes. You when want you to. fail, you're just, yeah, you want to fail to get better. And you're just yes. another one of those hundred agents that annoyed someone for half a second. And that's okay. Move on to the next, right? Exactly. And you, the reason I say you want to fail and the reason you agreed with me that you want to fail is because you don't learn so much from your victories. You learn way more from your failures. You learn what not to say, what, how not to say it, what to do better next time. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you build a tremendous amount of confidence in the person and confidence in yourself. And the way I always ask people, and I was just teaching a class yesterday for the board of realtors up here in Salt Lake City at the Young Professional Network. And one of the things I told them is that you, confidence in this process of for sale by owners and expireds comes from an overwhelming amount of failure. And through those failures, you have a stockpile of wins. So you have an overwhelming amount of failure. You have a stockpile of wins. And then on top of that, you have incredible confidence in your ability to do what it, whatever it is that you want to do in the business. Specifically for sell by owners and expireds, you gain an incredible amount of confidence by all the failures that you had in the process. And so that teaches us how to have a tremendous amount of rapport. Because rapport, have you heard of the, the, the platinum rule? You ever heard of that? I haven't. Have you heard of the golden rule? Yeah. What's the golden rule? Uh, I hope I'm right. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? Exactly. Treat your neighbor like you want to be treated. Exactly. So the platinum rule is one step further and it's one step better. And the platinum rule is do unto others as they would have you do unto them. Hmm. Do you see the difference? Do unto, so. do unto others as they would have you do unto them. Don't do unto others as you would have done unto you because you're not them. Right. So the golden rule is a lesser law. The platinum mm. rule is the higher law. And if you use the platinum rule and you be for them who they need you to be on the phone, then you gain tremendous amounts of fantastic rapport. I love that. So, so what do you say? Give us some examples of how you would verbalize or, or apply this platinum rule to your actual conversations and your scripts? Yeah. So the first thing you have to do is you have to fix what's going on up here, mm -hmm. right? So you have to get your mind right. I always do like a, a Tony Robbins meditation or like a, uh, like a, a morning book reading and a, and a meditation. I, I Meditation to me is the best thing to start before I get on the phones. Because mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do when I'm meditating, it's not a spiritual thing. It's just an, an emotional and mental thing to get you in the place that causes you to want to have um, the right kind of result. And what I mean by that is if I'm always concerned about whether or not I'm going to make the next dollar, am I really serving them or am I serving me? Serving yourself. You're serving yourself. That's right. And we all need to eat, right? Everybody needs to eat. But if you can eat by serving those other people that are on the other side and they actually want you to serve them and because you approached them in a way that caused you to be in their favor, then they're going to have a great experience with you. So let me ask you this. Uh, do you, do, I don't know if you have the numbers or not with Red X there, but how many for sale by owners, uh, let's say, or expireds, do people have to call typically to set one appointment? Oh, it varies wildly. Um, here, I can dig around and find that. But I think, 
I mean, I don't know. What's your experience, Alma? I can, I can kind of give you the answer. Yeah. So yeah, let's do because it. I've trained so many people on this, your average agent who's been in the business, let's say two to three years, when they get on the phone, it usually takes them about 20 to 30 actual conversations to get one for sell by owner appointment. And that's conversations, not dials or calls, right? That's correct. Not dials. It's probably 50 dials, right? And then you'll have 20 conversations okay, and or 30, and then you'll have one appointment. Hmm. Now, when I started in this industry, it, my average, this is how terrible I was at this guys. Okay. This people look at me and they go, Oh man, you're so good at this. You are, you're, you have a gift. I'm like, I do not have a gift that I, I earned this crap. Like this was stuff that took me years to develop because I didn't have a gift. That's the problem. I wasn't already gifted with this like amazing ability to close people on the phone. As a matter of fact, my first job I had in sales, I was the number one worst sales guy <laughs> on the team. And that, I did, that was doing summer sales door to door selling pest control back in like 97. Mm. And what I found out by that is that I was terrible at sales. Well, if I want to sell houses and I want to actually make phone calls, then I need to up my skills. It wasn't bred into me. I wasn't mm. born with it. It didn't come to me just because I got a license. It didn't come to me because I had good conversations with people. Because I feel like I was a pretty good conversationalist, but I was a terrible salesperson. Mm. Because there's a few things you have to have in order to close a deal. Number one is you have to build fantastic rapport. And the way to build fantastic rapport is by asking fantastic questions. Now, now that's kind of a blanket statement. Let me ask you this. Uh, what do you think a fantastic question is? Sorry, you didn't. I don't know if you knew you were going to be interviewed a little bit on this. No, no, this is perfect. Um, <laughs> asking fantastic questions. I think a question is something, a fantastic question is something that um, kind of uncovers or helps you discover their wants and needs, right? Yes. Again, it's about them, but it's about helping them discover or ha having them teach you what they're trying to get out of moving or selling or transact or whatever, you know? Yes, exactly. And the, and, and when somebody asks you a question and they're not really, they don't really have the right motivation behind it. Can you kind of feel it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think if I can put that, my, my comment more succinctly, it's almost like you're discovering their motivation so that you can leverage it for an appointment, right? Yes. Yes. And the, and the thing is, is behind that, typically people slip they're, they have commission breath when they talk. Yes. yes. And so when, even that. though maybe they have a, a um, like a really good heart, they have a servant's heart, they want somebody, they want to help people because they also need to help themselves. They slip and they sound like they're clumsy or, or they're, they sound like they need it and they want it. Right. Right. And so the, the prospect, when you're calling them, they can feel that immediately. They can mm. feel that within the first five seconds of the phone call. And so asking a fantastic question is one that is 100% backed by your integrity and your desire to serve that prospect. Mm. And that's, that's where it starts up here, right? Yes, yes. And, and you have to be completely, you said it starts up here. You have to be up here completely emotionally unattached to the outcome of whether or not you win the deal up here got to be completely unattached to the outcome like i could care less if i get this i don't care if i win this prospect i don't care if i do this deal the only thing i care about only thing is taking care of this person and making sure that they are served to the best way possible and that is a servant's heart mm. that's the difference between a salesman and a servant and so if you don't want to be a servant and you don't love people enough to want to give them that, then you're in the wrong business. You need to get out, go get a job or go do sales where you can snake people into doing something that you want them to do. Right. That brings me to the next concept of building great rapport and causing people to love you on the phone is let me ask you this. What do you think the difference is, is between, um, let's see, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, your, your, um, Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Let me let me just go straight into it. Okay. The way that people will love you the most is through your intent. Mm -hmm. 
They'll feel that, that you care about them. And the difference is, is it's your intent. Oh, whether you're trying to manipulate them or persuade them. That was what mm. I was looking for. So what's the difference between manipulation and persuasion? Can you tell me? Um, Let's give you the answer. So yeah, give me the answers. I think that's a, that's a kind of a complex one. There's a lot of overlap. Yeah. You got manipulation, which is you're trying to get them to do something for you. Persuasion is you're trying to get them to do something for them. Mm, okay. So it's, a, it's based on your intent. So that was the word right. that I had before. That so if sense. you intend, if your intention is to do something for them, get them to do something positive for them so that they're right. out in the best possible, then you're persuading them. If you're trying to get them to do something for you, you're manipulating them. Mm. And they can, they can pick up on that so easy. Instantly. Yeah. Instantly. I mean, and the funny thing is, is when all of our knowledge that we've all had throughout the years based on what sales is, right? All of our knowledge is always based on that old school, like, you know, hardcore, tough, you know, sales practices and, and keep going. And it's a numbers game and go to the next and the next and the next and the next. I refute that. It is not a numbers game. It's more of a skills game. Now, the numbers should be smaller than the skills. The skills should way outweigh the numbers. And what I mean by that is when I talked to you and I said earlier, and I said, hey, how many uh, calls does a person typically have to make in order to set one appointment? It's 20 to 30 contacts, 20 to 30 contacts to set one appointment. So that is a numbers game for sure. But if right. you have your skills and you have incredible discipline with your schedule, and then you also... Um, you also build fantastic rapport, then that 20 to 30 calls turns into three to five calls mm -hmm. or contacts. Rather. I'm sorry, not calls, contacts. So it turns into three to five contacts mm -hmm. setting appointments. Now, if you go on to my YouTube, that's closer cult. That's right here in the corner. C L O Z E R C U L T on my YouTube channel. Um, I have dozens of hundreds of hours of content of me calling for sell by owners and expireds. And what you'll notice is that my calls are usually within the first two or three conversations, I'm setting an appointment. I love that. That's, that's cool. So I, sorry, sorry. I was, I was busy pasting your YouTube link into the, into the chat there, but um, that's super impressive. I just wanted people that to sink in for people for a yeah. second. Three to it's five conversations. Three to, five, three to five conversations to set an appointment. Amazing. And so, People look at that and they go, no way, you're full of it. That's impossible. So I had a bunch of people uh, um, debate me on this online once, right? We get online yeah. and then you have all the all the trolls jump on and try, you know, because they, they base your success on their results, right? And so I had all these trolls hop on and I'm like, you know what, what do I do? I'm reading Grant Cardone's book one day and the 10X rule. And he, he talks in there about stacking the wood pile so high in the winter time that you have so much wood that you'll never burn it all. And he said, that's what 10 Xing your business is. That's what 10, the 10 X rule is all about. Mm. You do 10 times. And then he asked the question, what would your business look like if you 10 times did? If you took your, the thing, the daily tasks that you do every day and one day, just one day you 10 X it, what would it look like? What would your business turn into if you took that one day and the two appointments that you set that day and you 10 x it? Mm. And I was like, dude, I, I would do literally like an entire month's worth of, of appointments in one day. And then he said, then ask yourself, is it possible? And we all know anything's possible, right? right. And we're, we're not even concerned about what's possible, or, or I'm sorry, what's realistic. We're not concerned about what's realistic. We're only concerned about what's possible. And so if I if I take that that information and I go implement it into my day, then I'm setting 20 appointments in a day. Theoretically, right? Right. So this mind that at this time and in, in my mind's going, oh man, if I could set 20 appointments in one day, then I'm done for the rest of the month prospecting. 
uh, is it possible? Can I really do that? So you know what I did is I hop online and I post on everything. And I said, I'm going to tomorrow live on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all my accounts. I'm going to do a live prospecting session. I don't know how long it's going to take me, but I'm going to set 20 appointments. Dude, all those haters and all those naysayers. Did you do it? Dude, they were jumping online like they're <laughs> impossible. You can't do this. Yeah, right, bro. I'll believe it when I see it. Um, you know, they're just going nuts on there, man. People are just so hurt by the idea that I want to succeed on such a yes. high level. They're so frustrated with the fact that their minimum standard of two appointments in one day is, is being shattered emotionally by some guy who comes on with absolute confidence and power and desire to make it happen. And guess what? I did it. Amazing. I did it. It's on 20 my, in one day. It's on my Facebook. I have 11 hours of calling that day. I set, I, I just had my Red X lead and I had a phone and I dialed on a phone and that was it. I didn't use the dialer. I didn't use the Red X dialer or anything. I literally just took the leads and I told them, I said, not only am I going to do this, I'm going back to the days that when you had to print off your Red X leads, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going back to PDF. And so I printed off the leads paper on my desk. I took out all technology. I had my desk phone in front of me with a landline and I hand dialed every single one of those numbers. And it took me 11 hours. If I had the, if I turned on the three line dialer, maybe it would have taken me like five. <laughs> right. And I set 20 appointments that day by 9 PM. And I Amazing. started at, started at 9 AM and I took an hour break. Incredible. So what I say to people in this process is that, yeah, you'll go through a lot of failures. Yeah. You'll have a lot of frustrations. You'll have a lot of challenges, but when you actually do step up and you step out and you do something that no one else has done and you attempt to, to, to 10 X your life and your business and your results, you can accomplish whatever you put your mind to, whatever's possible, not what's realistic. Who cares what's real? Now, everybody will give you their opinion of what they think is realistic. You want to look at what's possible, not what's realistic. So do you want to do you want to uh, do you want to role play something real quick? Yeah, let's do. It. Well, first I just want to I want to set maybe um, give, give our audience a timeline, right? Because you're saying early on, twenty to thirty conversations to an appointment. Great, I think that's a great starting point for a lot mm -hmm. of people. How, Alma, how long did it take you? to go from that 20 to 30 conversations, one appointment to that three to five. I mean, how long were you working? Oh, how many months or years did it take? And I actually forgot to tell you when I started, it was a hundred to one. Oh, wow. Okay. Just so you know, before the average I found is 20 X, or so to one. Yeah. Before I found Red X, I, I was on another lead source and they just weren't that hot. They just weren't sure. very good leads. So it took me literally 100 conversations to set one listing appointment when I started. Wow. And, and I would do it every single night in the evenings. And sometimes it would take me three days to get one appointment, but I would sit on the phone, hand dial paper leads from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. is how I started in the business. Okay. And every single day I would just hand dial these leads. And, and dude, I was, I was terrible. Like I had the worst scripting. I had the worst like fear. You know, they could smell my commission breath, you know. Because I, I was poor and I was in the, living in this little you know low income housing apartment in Lehigh and I was a new married guy and I, I you know I was a stepdad and I, I had all these pressures on me and I just needed to make money doing this and even with that I still made a hundred thousand bucks that first year. Wow. Even with all of that against me, because I had my the you know because I had resources to actually call and numbers to call. I was able to make a hundred grand that year. And, you know, I, it, that it was, it was hard too, because I, I ended up getting into a really bad marriage, a really bad relationship. Mm. And um, the reason I bring that up is because I know a lot of people can relate mm -hmm. because this entire process is actually more of a mental game than, than, a, than anything. And in order to build your skills, you have, your mind has to be right. And so uh, that was very difficult. I remember those times just like, 
having an argument with my then wife and then having just these frustrations and then these like feelings of not being wanted in life. And then I'm supposed to go add value to those around me and try to serve mm -hmm. a client. And um, man, it was nearly impossible sometimes, but because I had accountability contracts with my broker at the time, George Morris, I was able to, to really dig in and push through um, and have high level of success, even with, you know, one appointment for every hundred contacts. But then shortly, I would say to answer your actual question, I would say from year one to year two, I probably tightened that up uh, it, down to probably 15 to 20 contacts. Okay. Because what I did is I took my, the script that I had and I would just scribble out everything that didn't work and rewrite it. And so I had like, I, had, I literally had like this stack of, um, you remember the old yellow uh, notepads? Yep. Oh yeah. So I used to, I had a stack of yellow notepads because my dad taught me that a yellow notepad and a red pin was a, was like a powerhouse statement for notes. And so I had these yellow notepads and red pins. Sometimes they were blue, sometimes they were black, whatever. And I, but I would write on these yellow notepads and I have a stack of them and I would take these scripts and I would change them and adjust them. And so if, if I would say something like, hi, I was calling about the home for sale. Is this the owner? And people hung up on me. I'm like, ah, how do I adjust that? How do I change that? So that when they, when I call them, they're more likely to respond after that first one second statement. Right. And so I changed that entry point of the conversation. And then I went to the next section. Okay. And you're, you know, and, and uh, I saw, you know, you're selling it for sell by owner, you know? So I, that next section, I, so I changed it till it was something that they would respond to. Hmm. Because what I saw is when I said one statement, it triggered a, an objection immediately instead of a question. And I'm like, how do I change it from triggering them to instantly want to say no to me? to triggering them to want to answer or ask a question. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so, that, so a lot was, of that is the answer to your question. That's yeah. how I did it in, in about a year. I went from 100 to 15 contacts was because I, I started to change and adjust the way that I would make a statement to them on the phone. And, and it was all little stuff like yeah. I wouldn't say, hi, this is, at that time I was with Realty Executives of Utah, right? I remember when I first started calling, I'm like, hi, my name's Alma. I'm with Realty Executives of Utah. Uh, I was calling about the home for sale. Is this the owner? And what I learned was immediately they just hung up on me. And so I'm like, okay, how do I stay within the laws of my, or, you know, of my industry? Because I have to disclose who I am. I have to present myself. How do I do that um, in that first statement? And so I, I turned it all around and you guys, I can show you my script. If anybody's interested, just hit me up online. Um, hit me up on Instagram. Uh, it's the same. That's the best way for me to, to get your information. Just hit me up and ask for the script and then put in there your, your email. And then I'll send you the script and a video link on YouTube of, um, of what to, what to say. Cool. But uh, yeah, that, and so I changed up the script and yeah. we can role play it here in a sec if you want. It's different than probably what it won't sound different, but it'll result. The results are different. And that was kind of the point yeah. is how can I make it not necessarily sound? Um, I, I don't want it to be deceiving, but I want it to be effective. Right. Because Absolutely. I'm trying to serve them and trying to persuade them. Right. Right. Well, just just to kind of put a nice bow on that on that whole thought is that to any new agents out there who are prospecting or who are trying to do lead gen and they're maybe discouraged. I think you're the perfect example, example, Alma, of it took you a hundred conversations to make one appointment. And for that first year, you still made a hundred thousand dollars because you stuck with it. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, so, so let that be a lesson to everyone out there as, as, as difficult as it was for you, even calling at what some agents might argue is a not really optimal time of the day, you were still able to pull a six figure income calling for two hours a day, a hundred conversations to one appointment still made, you know, got a really good start in real estate. And then all it takes, you know, that might feel like a long time. All it takes is that year to get down, hone your skills and get to where you're, you know, anywhere from 15 to 20, maybe down to that five to 10 range. 
uh, conversations yeah, and, to appointments. So, and you guys have it really good now. That was selling like twenty homes a year. Okay? Right. Now we sell four homes and we get the same financial result. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Because our 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 values have increased so high that now you do the same thing in four houses. Now, of course, uh, you know all of all of our other expensive expenses has have increased as well in life. Um, and in housing and in food and everything's gone through the roof. So you, you have to work harder to get more, but literally that hundred grand now using that same method with higher skills and the same, even small, even smaller numbers now results in a much greater income and lifestyle, right. even with, you know, inflation and all of that stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. So we are, Running a little bit low on time, Alma, but I do want to save some time here to go over some dialogues, maybe some scripts, maybe some role plays. So can we, let's start with expireds. Let's do expireds and for sell by owners. Yes. Let's role play a call and and really highlight the first thing you say on the phone from to make them want to talk to you, to make them love you from the moment they meet you, right? Okay. Sounds good. So let's start off with an expired call. You ready? Yeah. Okay. So here's the interesting thing. Most people think you have to have an expired script for expired mm. calls. Okay. I have one script uses the exact same verbiage that covers expireds and for sale by owners. All right. I love okay? that. No separate script, same script. You have to memorize one script, say one thing, you'll get the same result. Okay. You ready? Yep. Okay. I'm going to call you. You're an expired. Okay. okay. Ring, ring. Hello. Hi. Hey, I was calling about, uh, you have a home for sale. Uh, no, it's actually not available anymore. Oh, okay. And you, you're, are you selling that for sell by owner? No, we had it listed, but it didn't end up selling. Oh, really? Okay. Well, my name's yeah. Alma. Um, I'm with whatever ABC realty. I'm sure you've had just a ton of agents calling you trying to list it, right? Yeah. I've had actually quite a few this morning. Have you? <laughs> yeah. Well, fortunately the purpose for my call is we just sold a couple other properties not far from you in my company. And so I was just calling to get some info about this one. Is that okay? Uh, sure. Okay. So tell me a little bit about it. So how many bedrooms does it have? Uh, it's got three bedrooms. Oh, it does. It has three, you said? Mm -hmm. Okay. So three bedrooms. And then how many bathrooms? Two. It does have two. Okay. So two bathrooms. Are they full bathrooms or? No, half? one full, one half. Okay, so one full bathroom, one half bathroom, and then three bedrooms. And is this is this a single family home or is this a condo? It's a condo. It is a condo. Okay. And then does it have a basement too? Uh, no, no basement. Okay, so single or one uh, all above ground, mm -hmm. three bedroom, one and a half bath condo. Um, and what what Eric? What neighborhood are you in? Uh, we're in South Lehigh. You are in South Lehigh. Okay, cool. Perfect. So now, now tell me, um, have you done any upgrades to the property since you've owned it? No. Okay. And any upgrades to like the kitchen or anything like that? No, no, not really. Okay. And how, how is the property um, condition wise? It's in pretty good shape. I think uh, we, we, we put a few little touch-ups before we listed it with our last agent, but oh, did you? nothing what major. Kind of, yeah. What kind of touch-ups did you do? Um, we, I guess we painted and, uh, cleaned up a little bit and then replaced the carpet in a couple of rooms. Oh, good. Okay. So you've done paint and carpet and then mm -hmm. you've cleaned up. When you say you've cleaned up, you just kind of decluttered or what? Yeah. Decluttered and, and just made it a little bit more presentable. Okay. Perfect. And then do you have a garage? Yes, you do. Okay. So when you decluttered, did you just kind of take all that stuff and put it in the garage? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. And, and let me ask you this. You had it on market with this other agent. How long did you have it listed for? Uh, about six months. It took. Really? Yeah, we had it up for a while. Yeah. Holy cow! And um, and it just, and it just didn't sell, huh? Yeah, just didn't sell. How do you feel like it was priced? Uh, well, my agent told me it was fair, and it was similar to a lot of the other condos in our neighborhood. So. Okay. So do you do you feel like that's correct that, that it was priced well? I honestly, I I don't know. Okay. It's hard to tell. So it may or may not have been priced right. Let me ask you this. How um, how do you feel like it was being exposed? Do you feel like it, how do you feel like the marketing was on it? Uh, I, I don't know what kind of marketing they did on it. Okay. 
Um, do, do you know you don't know how how many websites it went on or any of that stuff? I mean, I saw it on on Zillow and I saw it on our uh, on Utah Real Estate, but that's about it. Okay, so at least a couple websites is that yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Well, do you still want to sell it, or do you just want to keep it? Uh, you know, I think I think we're just going to wait maybe until this time next year and try again till next spring, try and sell it early summer. Okay. So eventually, you want to sell it? Is that right? I think so. Yeah. Okay. So if if you could if you could sell it now and and not wait till spring, it, I mean, obviously, you'd be open to exploring that, right? Uh, maybe it's kind of hard with the kids in school and everything, but yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, well, let me ask you this. I don't, I don't know if this will work for you or not. You know, it may not, but obviously, I mean, if, if we could figure out a way that by working together, we could get the property sold by listing it and actually marketing it correctly, putting it on way more websites. So people actually see it, getting multiple showings on it a week and putting in your putting into your, because I'm sure there's a certain amount of cash you need to net. So if we could put the amount of cash that you need to into your pocket, even after commissions and all that stuff, but actually sell it this time, I mean, obviously you'd be open to at least exploring that, right? Um, maybe. I think with the kids starting in school already, we're, we're kind of settled here until, until this time next year. So I'm not sure. Yeah. Good. I'd have to and talk to my wife. So. Yeah. And here's the good thing, you know, it, it it may or may not make sense for us to work together and it may not make sense for us to work together right now. It, it may make sense later. Who knows? Either way is fine with me. Um, but at the same time, if we were able to meet and I can show you what I've done to sell multiple properties in your area, I've just sold two homes last week alone. So if we could figure out a way to put in your pocket, that cash get you sold, get you into the next place. Um, I mean, you'd be open to at least exploring that, right? Whether it's here now or later. I guess so, yeah. Okay. So what, what typically works better for you guys uh, to talk about that? Like afternoons or evening time? Uh, probably evenings when everyone's home. Evening? Okay. What does your um, Thursday evening at 6 look like? Mm, like you know, we're, we're booked out on, on Thursday. We've got, a, we got a, a church activity. You do? Okay. What does what your um, Wednesday evening look like? I think we're free Wednesday. I'll check with my wife. Okay. So let's do this. Um, let's put you down. I'll put you down for Wednesday. And then what time do you think would work ideally on Wednesday? Mm, maybe seven. Seven. So I'll put you down for seven. Between now and then, you can go check with your wife, make sure that she's not doing anything. And then I'll do a little bit of research on the property and make sure that what I'm talking about could actually work with your home. Because like I said, it may not because I don't know the numbers and why it didn't sell and all that stuff. So I'm going to do some research on that and then we'll get back together. And if what we talk about makes sense and we can actually sell the home using the right marketing and we can sell the home, you know, in the next 20 or 30 days, as opposed to waiting six months, um, then cool. We'll, we'll, we'll list the home. And if not, no big deal, no pressure. Okay. Sounds good. Is that fair for you? I think so. Yeah. Okay, so I'll see you Wednesday. Actually, so that's tomorrow. So I'll see you Wednesday, uh, tomorrow night at seven. And then if there's any questions or your sweetheart has any questions, just let her know. I don't have any high pressure sales pitch or any of that crap. We're just gonna look at the numbers. I'll come take a quick walk through the house. And then you, and you, you guys do not have to clean it up or any of that. Just, I, I can see through any of the typical life clutter. Um, and I'll just come through, we'll do a quick walk through. I'll show you what I found as far as what I think the home's worth. And then um, you guys can kind of tell me what your experiences were and what you think should have happened in order to make it sell. And if it works great, we'll list the home tomorrow. And if not, no big deal. Is that fair? Sounds good. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Sounds good. See you tomorrow at seven. Yeah. Thanks. And what was your name again? Andrew. Andrew. Cool. Andrew. Good chatting with you again. My name's Alma and uh, this is my cell phone. So I'll see you tomorrow at seven. Wonderful. See you then. Okay. Bye. So Alma, I have a question for you. Great sure. role play, by the way. That was awesome. I loved your opening line. That was great. Um, my question for you is how many people, how, how, how much success do you have with that dialogue working through the questions on the particulars of the house? How many people shut you down when you're asking how many beds, how many baths, you know, getting yeah. those details. Does keeping that detail oriented about the property question, you know, line of questioning work for you? Yes, it's critical. Um, and here's why I say it's critical. You do have to know about the house, right? Yeah, yeah. 
And everybody says, oh yeah, that's the same as the script that I use. I ask about the bedrooms. I ask about the bathrooms, but there's, it's actually not the same. It's different okay. because the difference is the, my tone, my rate of speech, they mm. felt, how did you feel when I was talking to you? Did you feel comfortable or did you feel antsy? I was definitely comfortable. I think putting myself in the shoes of a homeowner, comfortable, almost erring on the side of a little bit bored. Right. right. Exactly. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, so did you feel any risk being on the phone with me? No, no. You were very, very kind of slow and calm and articulate, but simple. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it, I think what was you asked me basically yes or no or one word answers. Right. Three right. bedrooms, two bathrooms, no right. garage, no right. updates. Right. Right. And and then I, I, I responded with and I, I restated everything that you said. So if you said three bedrooms, I was like, oh, okay, three bedrooms. That's nice. Right. So you said three bedrooms, right? So the difference between a typical question and a fantastic question is still tied up in your intent. Hmm. Now, when I was talking to you, did you feel like I had any intent other than serving you and taking care of you? No, I think I think I, I most of the intent I picked up on was I'm just trying to learn about your property. Yeah, right. right. For the, a good yeah. chunk of that conversation. And did I feel attached to the outcome of whether or not we work together? No, no. You definitely made it very clear several times that we don't have to work together. If it doesn't work, I'll leave you alone. Right. right. And, and typically, what's the risk of an agent or of, of a, what's a, what's the risk to the home seller of using an agent? The risk to the home seller of using an agent is... Um, I think one being an expired listing, eventually getting disappointed because it didn't sell. And then the big one that a lot of people consider is commissions, right? Money, right? Paying the money. Exactly. Yeah. You nailed it. Those are your risks. And so if you can reduce the risk of them working with you and they feel actually good about working with you, then you'll have a positive outcome. So your entire job, your entire job, your entire job of calling somebody is reducing the risk of them working with you. And the best way to do that is building fantastic rapport. Because when you talk to one of your close friends on the phone, it's not typically a risky conversation. You know what to expect. You know what their intentions are. You feel good when you talk to them. There's no risk in talking to your friend on the phone. Right. If you can have that same conversation with a for sale by owner or an expired, you've reduced the risk they will affirmatively say yes to you and you'll get an appointment with them every time. Amazing. Amazing. Almost and I'm, 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 I'm replaying that in my head and I'm like, oh, that same line of questioning can essentially work for, for sell by owners, right? Is there anything you would do it's, differently? Oh, nothing. Okay. And literally when people, when I, when, if you noticed when I, when you said, yeah, or when I was calling it for an expired, I said, and you're selling that for sell by owner, right? Mm. It didn't seem unnatural for me to ask that, right? Right. Interesting. It doesn't yeah. to them either, because if they're not selling it with their with an agent, what? Are, how are they selling it? For sale by owner. Da da da. Yeah. I can use the exact same script with expireds as I do for sell by owners. I don't even have to change the verbiage. I don't have to remember anything else other than the fact that I need to ask them questions about the home, and then set an appointment to meet with them and do a quick prequal. That's it. Amazing. A, a, a nice two in one script. So you Dude, can just queue up all your expires and for sale by owners and roll with it. I love that. Exactly. I use the exact same script for both of them because I used to have one script. For, I used to have four scripts for for sale by owners, two or three scripts for expires, you know, six scripts for, you know, whatever. And I'm like, why do I have all these stupid scripts, man? Why can't I just have one script that does everything? And so I usually, I actually use that script on my wife when I try to make her happy. I use it on, <laughs> <laughs> I use the script for everything. When I'm closing deals, when I'm negotiating, like there's aspects of that script that I use all throughout my life uh, because it's such a powerful tool to just get through all the crap, lose people's uh, uh, fear of talking to you and working with you and then helping them to make the best decision for their family and list their home. Right. Amazing. Amazing. So yeah, we, we just role played expired and for sell by owners in the exact same role play. Beautiful. Well, I hope that our audience was taking very careful notes and they can always go back, rewatch this episode 
take down that script word for word. Or like you said, hit you up on Instagram, send yep. Alma here your email. Yep. And and he'll he'll share some videos and script resources with you there as well. Yes. So Alma, thank you so much for doing that. That's You're very welcome. generous of you. And and, 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 and look at all my videos online too on the on closer yes. cult on on uh, where is it? It's right here. Closer cult, but right there. <laughs> on closer right. cult uh, YouTube channel. And uh, there's tons, hours and hours and hours of me making live calls. Yes. And those live calls, I just I just have to continue that plug, Alma, is those live calls are so important for agents who want to learn how to improve their results prospecting on the phone, right? Making these calls. Because, because not only does it give you a, a taste of reality for some of the rejection and some of the failure and, and you know, maybe going an entire session without making an appointment that's fine because you just keep going and then also learning the dialogues, the scripts, how to handle any objection out there. I'm sure you've, I'm sure you've heard them all. Um, yep. There's so, really only so, about five to 10, to, to five to 10 objections that people always have. Right. Right. So you don't well, um, if it's all right with you, Emma, we will have to have you back on the show maybe to go over those objections and, and how to calls. handle them. Yeah. Let's or we should do calls. some live calls. Absolutely. Yeah, I would love that. I would love that. We'll set that up for sure. Um, unfortunately, we are out of time for today, Alma, but thank you so much for coming on the show, sharing so much valuable information. I hope everyone is taking notes. I've got a big old page of notes right here. Um, I think my my key takeaway is reduce the risk by building rapport. And if you yes. follow that script and and do it calmly and you know put their interests and their needs in front of yours, that's all it takes. And you can be an amazing real estate agent. Yeah. So, and I do for anybody else. I do tons of of speaking gigs. So I do uh, mm. brokerage brokerage trainings. I'll go speak at your uh, at your quarterly meetings, at your summit meetings, all that stuff. And so, feel free to call me up, and you can hire me, and I'll come train your agents for a couple hours, two hours, whatever a day, you know, whatever we decide on. But um, it's it's something that everybody can learn. You just have to have the right tools. Amazing. I love it. Well, thank you again, Alma, so much for joining us today. Uh, thank you to everyone who joined us live. If you're catching the replay, um, go ahead and like and subscribe on YouTube and Facebook so you can get notifications when we do go live. Or if you're a busy agent and you just want to catch the replay, keep on doing that. The Red X podcast. Um, and, and you can catch all of our past and future episodes there. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. Alma, thank you, thank you again you. so much. And we will catch everyone uh, next Thursday. Same time, same place, 1.30 Mountain Time here on YouTube and Facebook. See you Thanks. later.